Palace, Rich Stadium, Orchard Park in New York. You want records? The Bills are 8-0 in playoff games here under Marv Levy. You want another statistic? They marched to three of their four Super Bowls through here and combined. John Elway and Joe Montana didn't throw a single touchdown pass in those AFC title games. It's an AFC wild card matchup. It's the Miami Dolphins and the Buffalo Bills, a rematch of a great game played here two weeks ago. Welcome, everybody, with Dick Vermeil. I'm Brett Musburger. Dick, we came to town. Huge changes with the Buffalo defense. Playing much better all season. And you have to credit John Butler, the general manager here. He brought in free agents, three of them in the offseason. They all made a contribution, not only in performance, but in character and leadership as well. Bryce Pop. NFL Defensive Player of the Year, 17 and a half sacks. Ted Washington, nose guard starter. Jim Jeffco, 13-year veteran out of Dallas, playing like a rookie. And they haven't turned the ball over as much on offense. But if you wanted to win here, you'd come with a quarterback who handled bad weather at Pittsburgh, Dan Marino. Nothing bothers Dan Marino but other than a pass rush. And for Dan's a quarterback to win today, the offensive line's going to have to do a better job. Brent, uh, they're starting two rookies on the right side, and that is a problem, and they can solve some of those problems. They're starting two all pros on the left side, but in my opinion, and watching Richmond Webb and Keith Sims over the last three game tapes, they're not playing like all pros, and they're going to have to step it up today if Dan Marino's going to have a big game. Now we go to the third member of our team, Leslie Visser. Leslie? Brent, the winds down here are gusting up to 20 miles an hour, and that's bad news for everyone. The Dolphin punter, John Kidd, who of course used to play with the Bills, said the worst part is in the north right corner of the end zone. He said he told his Dolphin teammates that Jim Kelly will not even throw there in a strong wind, and they should be aware of that. Well, as for injuries for the Dolphins, J.B. Brown will not start, although he will come in as a nickel cornerback, and that is critical because the Bills finally have a healthy Andre Read, Brent. Leslie, thank you very much as we get ready here for the Bills and the Dolphins. The playoffs beginning the second game of our doubleheader here today on ABC, of course, down in Philadelphia. But we'll move to the NFC, the Detroit Lions, the hottest team in the league going into that one. And here, Steve Christie getting ready to kick it off for the Bills and get started as Dan Marino and the Dolphins will have the ball with the first possession. Yesterday they were practicing kicking the ball to spikes and keeping it out of McDuffie's hands. We'll see if Christie does that here. McDuffie is now moving over toward the center of the field. And now he is signaling spikes exactly what he wants done on the return. Wind is going to be a factor here all game long, as Leslie told you. May play a very important role in the outcome of this game. Snow is not forecast. It is not a miserable day as far as weather is concerned. Perhaps about the same as two weeks ago, although the players on the field were saying that the wind appears to be gusting just a little bit more than it did that day. That game, of course, won by the Bills, 23 to 20. Four touchdown passes and 15 interceptions. Key members of his offensive unit. Irving Fryer could be his go-to guy or O.J. McDuffie. Eric Green needs to be productive. Parmalee and Byers will open up in the eye formation. You can see Byers set in front of Parmalee. Parmalee and the Dolphins have come to run, and there is nothing doing on first down. Now, Dick Vermeil told you about the offensive line. And let's take you inside this line right now. You can see Webb and Sims over there on the left. But look at the two rookies over on the right side. They have to step up today. Green and Milner. Tim Ruddy anchoring the line at the center spot. So 
they come up to the line now with second down and long for Marino. And the rookies, of course, have to exchange a lot of information. Marino changes so many plays at the line. They have to know all the calls. And there goes. The ball is on the ground. Incomplete. The official rules incomplete. You could see him coming right into your picture. There was never a doubt about that one. Now the defense that Dick told you about. Phil Hansen. He's the underrated one up front. And you've got the future Hall of Famer, Bruce Smith, over on the right side. Bryce Pop, who made such a difference here in the 3-4. Cornelius Bennett, an impact player. Marlon Kerner at left corner is going to be tested. When I was with the Dolphins earlier this week, they threw almost everything deep against the left cornerback. Now it is third down and nine for Marino from the shotgun. Penalty flag. Incomplete, but there is a penalty on the play. Red Cashin, the veteran, is your referee today. Here's Cashin's crew. John Keck is the umpire. And this has been a penalty called much more frequently this year. Goes against Marv Levy's defensive unit. Missed three games this year, as you're well aware. What a tremendous job he has done here as coach. So because of the penalty, instead of being forced to punt deep in their own territory, it's now third and five. Now another thing that's a huge factor for the offensive line is the crowd noise being made in here and generated. Complete on a beautiful hit by Fimmel Johnson. They rolled up into a double zone and the corner were just sitting outside waiting for that breaking pattern. Miami came in here wanting to run. Buffalo defense came in here wanting to shut down the run and push the responsibility for Miami moving the ball all on Dan Marino's shoulder because they believe they can put pressure on him with third down four and, and every once in a while a fifth rusher. Well, here it is now. John Kidd. With his former Northwestern roommate, Steve Tasker set to return this and Tasker's going to let it go. It is out of bounds. Now, Red Cashin, the referee, marking where this punt went out of bounds. And it'll come at the 40 after a 36-yard punt with the wind, and the veteran Jim Kelly brings the offense out to the line. 22 touchdown passes and 13 interceptions on the year for Jim. The rookie, Derek Holmes, but Thurman Thomas, can he be as successful as he was two weeks ago behind this offensive line. Folks, focus in on that center, Kent Hull. He was the center in all four of the Bills' Super Bowl appearances. They are a veteran team down the middle. You look at the eyes of Thurman Thomas, that deep eye, so he can see the defense. And Kelly, protected, throws, completes the first pass for a good nine yards against Benson, who's a dandy of a cornerback on that side. Defensively, Tim Bowens is the man to watch. Can he create some mayhem up front as he did last year as a rookie? And going without the huddle, and of course, Jim Kelly frequently gets into the rhythm, calls his own plays. Otherwise, he'll look over to the sideline, and Coach Garrett will offer advice. And here's the man we expect to see, Thomas, squirting through for a first down. And folks, if the Dolphins cannot stop Thurman Thomas, it's going to be a long day for Miami. In their one win, he ran for 145 yards against them this year, Brent. Brian Cox has to step up big. Dwight Hallier gets taken out when they go to a nickel situation. Now, big change here is the fact that Terrell Buckley steps in again, replacing the injured Brown at that one corner. So a first down for the Bills. And immediately this time, Thomas is cut off and nothing doing. Cross was down there at the bottom of that pile. Tom Alavati, the defensive coordinator, told me that they normally play an over defense against Buffalo. And what they're going to do is show a defense and stem it back the different side, Brent, to, because they, they call an audible, then they give them something they can't run against. Well, Dick, here we are now. Second down and long. And uh, Kelly up under center for this pass with Thomas blocking for him. Goes left side, and he has got 
Tasker. See, with, when you're throwing the ball to Tasker, you're throwing the ball to a guy who really is a running back, a great special teams player, seven times Pro Bowl selected as a special teams player. And they actually had to argue with Marv Levy to get the offensive team to take him off the special teams. He is so valuable. But he can run with the ball after the catch, Brent. Dick, here's a third and two, one of which you would expect them to see if Thomas can get him one, but they go empty and send him in motion. And they throw for the first down this time. So they're going to save that third and two run that was so critical of that earlier win. Obviously, until later in the game, they will now get Bill Brooks into the game. So Brooks and Tasker have been receivers. Thurman has carried the ball, and the Bills are just mixing it up. What they do is go empty, taking the running back, Thurman, as you see him coming to. Now he'll stretch the defense to the bottom of your screen. That'll open up a little area for Brooks to work in that one-on-one. -on -one. First down, move the chains. Dick, this is uh, very efficient here so far, what they're doing. Patiently moving the ball, using a lot of different players. Now he goes to the play fake. Fires right side, got Tasker, Tasker to the two-yard line, and the Bills threaten on their first drive, and it, you just have to be impressed with the poise and the way Kelly is running things right now. That's a 27-yard gain. You know, and play action was not a big part of this offense a year ago. They added the play action to it this year, and it has really helped them, especially on those early rundowns, Brent. That's a, a big throw, but the big throw, good protection because of the fake run. Gardner is the fullback. And busting across, that's Tim Bowens, 95, who came across. He's quick, but too quick that time. <laughs> Before the snap, encroachment, number 95, half the distance to the goal, still first down. Timmy Bowens is a guy that when he really sucks it up and wants to go hard, he can make a difference in that front. He tends to sometimes take a breather on snaps, Brent. Tyndale's the motion fullback leading Thurman Thomas, and the Bills are quickly on the board. Their first drive, they made it look easy against the Miami defense that time, ladies and gentlemen. Too easy. Tim Tyndale, the wingback that time, going in motion, crossed the formation, and he came back and he wham blocked the defensive tackle coming from the left side of your screen right here. You'll see him go inside now and watch him block the tackle. Bang! He got a nice kick down block right there. There's the little crease that you needed for the touchdown. Good job by Tim Tyndale. Seven nothing like that. Bikes does not indicate where he's going. Now they change sides and Christie on the kickoff drive McDuffie three yards deep and he'll take a knee it's coming out on the 20. So this AFC wildcard game is brought to you by picking up the changes by Marino because of the crowd. There's no question that crowd knows he's going to a factor all through this but he's in the shotgun already. Inside handoff Byers there was a crease over here on the Dolphins left hand side and Byers ran into it. Now in practice Dick the Dolphins were adamant. They said we must have some kind of a running game. If we resort just to passing the ball, we're not going to get the job done. True, and Gary Stevens, the coordinator, says we want to run at Bruce Smith with power, with draw, just like they did that time, and then sweep outside. We've already seen the draw at him. And, of course, that gets that Pro Bowl side of their offensive line into a more aggressive mood. If you ask an NFL lineman, he wants to go on the attack sometimes. And now they come back for a yard to the inside. And Phil Hansen, number 90. What a wonderful story he is. He is, and you said it already, Brent. You know, he, he's an underrated guy. On any other football team, he'd get more credit. He has 10 sacks, 18 quarterback hurries, but you don't hear about the guy. Visiting with him on the field the other day, he's a Dakota guy. $300 an acre he's paying for his farmland. Going to raise some cattle. <laughs> this, <laughs> is bucks an area. this is bombing. This is bombing. Where can buy land for $300? Dakota, South, North, Montana, <laughs> Alberta. Come on out, coach. We'll show you something. Hey, third and three now, and the Dolphins need it. Marino's the best there is at throwing on third down. Short drop, fires incomplete. Dolphins are forced to punt. 
Chris Green did a real nice job of reaching around with his left hand and preventing that slant pattern. It was there. If he doesn't play it well, it's a completed pass. Marino back. He's going to be up underneath because he wants to throw a quick pass. There it is to the left side. Good job by Chris Green reaching around with that hand. Three plays and out. Three plays and out. Tough to win a football game playing offense like that. So here is Kid punting again. And this one is downed at the 45. Now, don't think that he's just a terrible punter, ladies and gentlemen. This is one of the worst places in the NFL. We'll have to wait and see. And again, good field position for Jim Kelly. The Bills are up by seven. See, Miami's in a five uh, defensive back situation here. A little easier to run against that five defensive back. And that's what they did, Dick, with Thurman Thomas, and look at this. See, that counteraction keeps the two inside linebackers, freezes them inside, then he has the ability to bounce outside. Of course, they're getting some help with the guard and tackle from the backside. Don Shula's been here before, winning his coach in history, but the man who has owned him is across the way. Marv Levy has more wins by far against Shula than any other coach. The long storied career of Don Shula. Deep drop, and here comes Thurman again, and this is what the Bills came to do. Bang, bang, number 34. Offensively on the left side, Reuben Brown, the big offensive left guard, did a beautiful job of coming off the ball right here in a one on one situation. He moved the force. Wham, and no help initially. Look at that block. Can't do it any better than that, Brent. Well done. He'll be a Pro Bowler someday. Five carries, 30 yards, coming right at you. You know, one of the things about the Bills against Miami, and certainly Dolphin fans and Bill fans know this, that in the past, whenever Marv Levy or Jim Kelly have found something that works against Shula, they never get off it. Levy will pound it, and so will Kelly. They will just say, come on, you got to stop this sooner or later, and if they don't, they'll just keep on going. Kelly now on that short drop, firing incomplete, and Tasker was extremely well covered that time by Troy Vincent, who's an outstanding cover corner. Now, Kelly calls all his plays, but he does get help from time to time from Jim Schaffner on the sideline, who is wearing the mic, and he talks to him. And when he needs help, he'll just look over and ask for the help. Otherwise, he's got it all programmed, all categorized, and he makes the calls. So let's make this third and eight for the Bills. After Kelly's first incompletion of the game, right down the middle, incomplete that time. Brooks intended, and Vincent again there on coverage. So Troy Vincent steps up in that defensive backfield and turns in a couple of fine plays. Well, he was in tight man-to-man -man coverage, and crossing pattern like that is tough to cover, Brent. He did an awfully good job. Now, Cox, they use as an outside defensive end. He runs a stunt back to the inside. He gets pressure, but not there in time. Still fooling around a little bit, isn't he? He's asking for trouble from this stadium, I'll tell you that. <laughs> so a 48-yard attempt with Tasker holding for Christie. Good! Oh, Mackerel. Now with the wind at his back. Finally, McDuffie. 20. Got See, hold. McDuffie. Out to the 35. That's why they were kicking away from him, and that's why the Dolphins are determined to get the ball in his hands. Marlo Perry making the tackle for the Bills. Well, down 10 now, Dick, and you and I have talked about Shula growing impatient, having a great quarterback, and starting to throw the ball. Will they resort to the pass, or will they continue to try to work on the run here? I think they want to get the running game going. They don't want to be one-dimensional with Marina. They have too many problems in the offensive line to do that. They've got to run the ball well. That doesn't mean they won't throw on this first down. They send Parmalee out as an additional wide receiver. Byers slips out 40. Byers out to the 47, and that is a first down on the start of this drive. Phenomenal advantage for home teams. 
You can see that the home team has won all 10 AFC wildcard games since they expanded the playoffs back in 1990. Overwhelming advantage. Now Parmalee moves back as the Dolphins running back and they will bring him across midfield. How about the battle of the offensive line here, Dick, against the defense of Buffalo? Well, right, right then, Brent, they got into two tight end formation, which forces you normally to balance up your defensive front, and then they go right at you and mush it. They didn't get any movement that time. Teddy Washington inside at the nose tackle would not be moved off the ball. Bruce Smith with his duel against Richmond Webb. Bryce Pop, the NFL's defensive player of the year. They're lined up and ready to go. The Dolphins go empty. Quick pop, Green should have had it. And there's a penalty flag thrown on the play. Red was going to give us the offside. And said, Wait, <laughs> let's me. have a discussion. Hold it here. Maybe we've got a better one. <laughs> Trouble with Red, he has no experience in this league. <laughs> Look at that guy. He's a grizzled vet. Before the snap, false start, number 86, no play. Five yards, still second down. Will the tire freeze put? Well, a reminder that ABC Sports will present a New Year's Eve blockbuster tomorrow. Big East champion Virginia Tech will take on Texas in the Nokia Sugar Bowl. Coverage from the Superdome in New Orleans kicks off at 7 Eastern. And we'll see how Virginia Tech and Texas make out in that one. Second down and 12. Marino standing back on his own 40. Has to step away. Gets it to Byers and it's an incompleted pass. Boy, Bruce Smith was in there. He was quick coming off the ball. In the last few games, this guy, and they say since the 49er game, Bruce Smith has taken his game to his all-pro level. Boy, did he come off the ball that time. He is so explosive out of his stance. Left side of your screen. Boom, he's right up underneath and a little inside move on Richmond Webb. Richmond's got to close on him and can't give him that inside gap. As a result... Third and 12 facing Marino and the Dolphins. McDuffie was the motion receiver. They'll use the safety valve. They'll drop it to Kirby, an excellent receiver, but far short of the first down. And Dan Marino gets knocked down again. You can only be knocked down so many times in a football game before you start throwing it erratically. Well, you start anticipating pressure, and it really throws you off as a quarterback, even the great ones, Brent. And again, that was Smith in there. So here comes John Kidd, who has played for both of these teams, and there's Steve Taskers, roommate from Northwestern days, Northwestern punter, Northwestern return man. And Tasker is going to let this one be downed inside the five yard line. Those Northwestern guys make mistakes too, huh? Right, He said his game plan today, he thought he wants to get more than 100 yards. He said his mother gave him the best advice, and that was stay away from that Brian Cox. Brent? Leslie, thank you very much. He has done a little of that today, too. And now from the one yard line, Thomas out to the four-yard line, a little breathing room for the offense. What's so great about him, Brent, is in tight, intense areas, he can get through tiny cracks. Doesn't appear to be any room, and he'll find a little crack. Now, he gets a good backside block there. He finds it. Now, there's that little crack, but he had to move all the way back to the left side to find that hole. Second down and six. Kelly runs him on a delay back there, and he slips through another seam out to the 11-yard line, and what could be a first down. Let's see. Now, it's a little short of it, I believe. Well, Brian Cox blew that one. Brian Cox blitz can run. No, they're and, not. It ran right by him. Here he is right here in the middle of your screen. He's going to come up inside, and he's going to take it. He's going to go get him. Oh, he gets picked off right there by Ruben Brown. Nice job, number 79. And 
they did get the first down. Move the chains. They come out from the shadow of the goalposts, and Cox will try to do a little bit better again to bring the end around. This was a hugely successful play when they bring him out of the slot. It really is part of their counter game, they were telling us yesterday, and not so much an end around. No, it really isn't considered a reverse. They ran it three times in the last game and made 37 yards on it. Really a good kick-out job out there by John Fina. Came all the way across the formation. They love that play. Well, they have run it six times in one game against the Dolphins for 50 yards. Right. They made a living off that play. Now on second down. And the defense not giving much on that side as Tim Bowens comes in underneath. But on that specific kind of counter, from what the defensive coordinator, Tom Olivale, told me, that play there was run three times for 37. Now, maybe he wants to reduce the amount of yards. Well, I think they're pretty sensitive about that stat. Oh, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> but see, you run back to that side with that kind of play because the defensive linemen are overshifted to the tight end side of the formation. Third and There's Tom four. Olivale. and end around and it breaks wide open for Brooks. Billy Brooks Woo! on a wonderful delay on that side. No one had stayed at home. They couldn't conceive of the Bills bringing the reverse back from the other side this quickly. What a well-conceived play at the right time. The fake to Tasker and here comes here Brooks. Come. Amazing play. I lost it for a second myself, Brent. See, that play, that kind of play, full flow, they had success with it. Now they take that same action and run a reverse off that. Good coaching. Derek Holmes, the rookie, checks into the backfield. Kelly just faking to him. Dave down the middle. Tasker. Tasker was the key receiver on Kelly's initial touchdown drive. And he goes back to the veteran who is having the season of his life as a wide receiver as well as a special teams guy. First 10 season, he caught 10 balls. Last six games, he had 15 balls, Brent. But again, that's play action. It's play action passing. It freezes the underneath people. They're in man-to-man -man coverage now. Crossing from the right side of your screen, he beats Calvin Jackson right there for the big play. And there is Holmes, the rookie, jammed up. Stewart, the safety, in on that stop, along with Bowens, who's been very active in that defense. There's 35. And Michael Stewart, starting at strong safety. But I would say so far, Dick, that Tim Bowens, number 95, has been the most active member of that defensive front for the... Uh, he is in game tape, too, when you study him. He really has talent. Klingbeil is a load inside, but not a, a real mobile guy inside. Steve Entman on the field with the rush, and the ball is dropped by Andre Reed. How often have you seen him drop that little crossing pattern that Kelly made a living off of? Andre missing, of course, 10 games this year with a pulled hamstring muscle. There's big Steve Emptman. First round pick, Indianapolis Colts a number of years ago, knee injury problems, signed a five-year contract to play for the Dolphins. Boy, he was a great college player prior to those injuries. Kelly and the Bills facing third and nine. Holmes stays in as his running back. Got a try. Oh, and it'll break wide open. Fina, the lead blocker. Fina clears even more yardage and Holmes to the one Woo, what a run what a story he is seventh round draft choice pick 244th in the draft and here he is running the draw back they get it back to him real deep Fina does a real good job on the right side of your screen number 70 of getting down he used the flash technique to get the end up field then release downfield excellent running effort there by Derek Holmes you got to give two scouts Dave Smith and Bob Ryan credit for locating that guy out of Portland State Gardner in front of Holmes off a play fake they'll throw incomplete and Lonnie Johnson was the intended receiver you know they came into this ball game in 16 games Brent and did not score a rushing touchdown in those 16 games in the first quarter and the first time they get the ball they score on like a one yard run but it took them 17 games to finally get it done this offensive line is a very very well off coached offensive line they execute real well both fundamentally and, and technically inside Brent 
Gardner and Holmes in the backfield. Gardner, number 35, you saw him set up directly behind Kelly. Holmes will follow him, nothing doing that time as Brian Cox makes the stop for the Dolphins. He did a real good job of running through that time. I don't think it was a close blitz. I think he saw the gap and took it, took the risk of getting there, and he got there. Real nice play by Brian Cox. See, he's giving signals. No, it's a call blitz. He's coming all the way. He does a nice job of flooring Glenn Parker, 74 there, and getting to the ball carrier. Really a good job. That's how an all-pro linebacker is supposed to play. So the first quarter well, on his way toward a ninth straight home playoff win here in Rich Stadium. This drive continuing where it began and Thurman Thomas has returned. He's in motion. Kelly rolling in that direction. Firing intercepted in the end zone. Picked off by Gene Atkins the free safety and Atkins out of bounds with a penalty flag flying at the 20. Kelly is furious with himself for that throw. That's the break the Dolphins needed. Yeah, you know, an experienced quarterback, you never throw the ball late in the middle. They're sitting back there. He rolled out. Plus, that pulls the defense toward the flow of the quarterback. You don't see as well. Now, Cox is up there helping uh, Cashin and his crew officiate. And the face mask penalty going against the Bills on that play. So let's take a look at exactly what Dick was showing you why this is a mistake on Kelly's part. See, he's rolling all right. Now you'll see 28 left-hand corner of your screen. Gene Atkins just following the quarterback. Boom, he takes it out of there. And Kelly's reaction afterwards. <laughs> you know, I really wonder. At any rate, it is Miami's ball that they just threw it to. But he made the mistake. And as a result, the Dolphins are alive. It would have been real tough digging out from a 17-zip hole early in the second. Now let's see if they can do anything with it. They fire complete, and it's O.J. McDuffie speaking to Joe Paterno. Coming from the Nittany Lions of Penn State, he has been a very valuable performer as we take a look now at the first quarter numbers. It can only be one thing. It can only be one way. I don't know if we even need the stats, Brent. It's got to be all Buffalo. Look at that. One first down, ten first down. Ten rushing yards, total plays. Oh, my. God. Total yards, 26-181. Double time possession, but no ball game. Kelly has thrown 13 interceptions in his last 10 games against Miami. And as a result, second down and one now with Green setting up on the right side, the tight end. Parmalee for the first down for the Dolphins. That time they got outside, Brute Smith he used a crash charge. He was in down and on the outside shoulder of Sims, and he went underneath him, and they got that little crack to the outside. But this is what they've got to do. They've got to stay with their game plan to run the football. Don Shula told me they wanted to do that, and so did Gary Stevens. He said, we must run the ball well. When, they, when we play well against Buffalo, we run the ball well. All-time Pro Bowl selection guy. First and ten, and from the shotgun. And he's got McDuffie again. See, get the ball in McDuffie's hands as often as you can. Because so many times he converts it to a first down. Because he has that great running ability after the catch, Brent. He's always been able to do that. Great maneuverability, good quickness, and he's tough. Coming off on Marlon Kerner, 46. He sets up quickly. He gets the ball. Now he can make you miss. You better come to balance if you're going to tackle him, Kerner. And he did. Nice job. Good technique. Marlon Kerner, the rookie from Ohio State, better get ready. <laughs> the Dolphins are coming. They're going to test him over and over to see if he can hold up. Here it comes. McDuffie on the reverse. Oh. Kerner's not at home. And he is forced out of bounds at the 42-yard line. That kind of action, you know, you get the split backs, which normally means run formation to the strong side, to the fullback. They ran that way, got full flow from the defense, broke the discipline uncontained from the backside. Good reverse, nine-yard gain. I have never watched a football practice in which an offense directed so much of its pregame attack at one spot as the Dolphins did in the direction of where Kerner is standing right now. Second down and one for Miami. Another first down. 
and how quickly things can change when you're dealing with as many great athletes as there are in the and National they're Football They're League. starting to block people too, Brent. They got the big tight end over here coming down, the fullback kicking out, and they're bringing the backside guard through. Very well executed. It's the old power, old play. Those goes Byers, 41 kick out. There's the young green, number 68 up in the hole, getting on the linebacker. That's how you move the ball, block people. First down, Dolphins at the Bills, 35. Fake by Marino. Fires outside and incomplete. You know what they don't do a lot of is play action out of the I formation. Most people that use I formation, Brent, as a running formation, use more play action than Miami does. And they're talking with a defensive coordinator, Wade Phillips for Buffalo. They were going to play I run all the way. And if they get burned with play action, they're committing to the run. Second down and 10. McDuffie is in the slot to the left, and now Parmalee comes out as a wide receiver to the right for the Dolphins. See, now that puts him on a strong safety, not a corner. And they will run Byers, and Byers is well short of the first down. This AFC wildcard game is brought to you by the all-new Ford Taurus, a look you've never seen from a name you know well. IBM, solutions for a small planet. And Miller Lite, when you've got the great taste of an ice cold Miller Lite, life is good. Third down and seven for the Dolphins with Wade Phillips, the defensive coordinator who has done, by all accounts, an outstanding job. He's got four down linemen in there right now with a, with a six-pack defensive situation. They're bringing the inside backer. Woo! And they play. get to him big time, Cornelius Bennett. He should not be able to get just as a fifth rusher to get free at Marino. Look at Marino's pointing at right now. He's upset. He ought to be upset. A linebacker turned loose on a great quarterback right up inside. Something's wrong. Someone blew it. And Marino's upset. Well, again, Dick, when you've got that right side and you've got two rookies over there, they don't know how to interchange and pass guys along. It's a real problem. And it can be tough. One rookie you can sometimes protect and you can help him with veterans. But two of them, baby, you got them both out there alone. <laughs> Now it's a fourth down for the Dolphins. Now Marino hanging tough. Throw high and incomplete. Gary Clark, the intended receiver, and it wasn't to be. The Bills take over. Miami had a chance with that interception to regain momentum and get back in it. They gained a little momentum, but they didn't get it done. Audible's better. Plus, Jim will not only call the play on the line of scrimmage, he will re-audible on the line of scrimmage. He'll call it twice. But great rapport between Schaffner and Kelly. You can see the three wide receivers in that end zone shot. First down and 10, coming out from the 33-yard line. Thurman Thomas again, and Thomas off to a huge day. First down, and somebody goes flying over there on the... Uh, Dolphins sideline. Look at that. He took the defensive coordinator out. Not only beat his defense, he then went and got the coordinator. And he KOs him. I mean, now there's a running back. Tom Olivadotti is a fine coach. What a nice person to visit with, too. And, he, you know, he's confident. He knows what he's doing. He knows what he wants to get done. But he needs the offense to help him today a little bit. Dick, Keep that. Wait a minute. He can't get knocked back on his heels like that. <laughs> okay. you got to get set when the running back's coming, man. You can't do that. <laughs> Boy, you're getting tough. <laughs> First down at 10 now, and they bring you-know-who, Tasker, out of that slot around, and this time the Dolphins swing it out very well, and it's a small game. And it was Marco Coleman coming from the backside, making a great effort to run it down. If they'd have slowed him up at all. Marco Coleman right there at number 90, a high effort, good, tough guy. Not the biggest defensive end in the National Football League, but a, but a give it all he's got on every snap guy, and a pretty good pass rusher. Pretty good. Sometimes, I, as I watch him, it looks like he has problems on the great big offensive tackle. He can't see real well once he gets in that rush technique. It's interesting. They leave, they're leaving Tasker in the slot, and they're keeping Andre Reed outside. Tasker coming through the formation, and now they will run Thomas for a huge hole. It's like stealing. Thurman Thomas to the 20-yard line. That's the old counterplay. That's freezing the inside backers with their counterplay, and off they come. They bring the backside guard and tackle. 
Well, that's what's next, the Detroit Lions and the Eagles, but let's go back to the Bills. You'll see that they'll block down here, and they'll bring both these guys from the back side to get the blocks at the point of attack. Boom, good block down, good kick out, good kick out, and quick enough to get through that hole and no one to fill because they sealed it off inside. Team that runs best normally wins this shootout. And here is Holmes who replaced Thomas. And Holmes battling. Holmes coming back. Holmes, touchdown, Buffalo. There's the Miami defense. Remember this, Jim Kelly calls all the plays. You know, a lot of quarterbacks would just as soon throw the ball when they're calling it. Not Jim Kelly. He loves the running game. Of course, when it's going well, it's a lot easier to call it, too. The Buffalo Bills have rushed for 171 yards already. Mock 16 and 5, including a couple of postseason wins. Only one other coach has won more games head to head against another coach. That was George Hallis's 30 victories against Curly Lambeau. And now the Dolphins will try it again with McDuffie. McDuffie out to the 34 yard line where they will put it in play. Already trailing 17 to make its head. Now, what's going on out there? They've got to try to get the ball downfield deeper, Frank, to get the big play out of that passing game. We're in the I formation. It's been run almost 100%. Turner is pressing over here. There's play action. And he has to drop it off to Parmalee, and the middle was open. And very good recognition by Marino. Let's get on to Leslie. Frank, you are right about saying that they are shaking their heads. The mood on the Dolphins' sideline is one of being shell-shocked. They've given the Bills great field position every time except once, and that one time the Bills got down in scoring position. Moments ago, Keith Byers turned to one of his teammates and said, what is happening, Brent? Yeah, it's stunning. Not so much that the Bills are ahead, but it seems to me that with the playoffs beginning, the ease with which they've accomplished it, and remember, it could be worse. The Bills threw an interception in the end zone. Reno back to the middle of McDuffie, who has been a warrior all game long. You know, one of the things about O.J. McDuffie, it's always interesting to scouts, well, maybe he's not fast enough for the NFL. He was always the key thing. He was always a football player at Penn State. He's like the great Chris Spielman. You'll see him later with Detroit. Yeah, he wasn't big enough and fast enough, but he was a football player. You know, you sometimes have to evaluate Bryce Pop on this defense that we're watching right now. One of the reasons why Buffalo invested millions in him. He's a football player. And there he is, the NFL's Defensive Player of the Year. Well worth Ralph Wilson's millions this year. Coming, picked up by the back. Marino hit on the release. Jump ball, intercepted Bills. And here they come again on the Marlo Perry interception. Phil Hansen, number 90. Good, good football player, Brent. You pointed it out earlier. You said he's underrated. He proves it right there. Look, and he likes that. Really a down-to-earth, hard-working, grunt type of football player. I tell you, I like him better when he plays in on a guard than when he plays in on outside on a tackle. Coming from the left side, number 90, he working hard. See, what he does is he keeps working harder than Andrew Green, 68, did at blocking him. Andrew Green, we ought to give him a ticket to this game. Marino ought to go over and find Andrews. Get after him. Watch, he's upset. Look at this. I can't believe it. I can't. What the hell is going on here, he says. <laughs> or words to that effect. <laughs> First and ten. Here comes Tasker off a of fake. Kelly hit on the release, and Thomas was wide open. So what they're doing now, the wrinkle is, the variation off of bringing Tasker on that little counter move out of the slot, faking, and Thomas broke wide open coming out of the... You talk about an offensive design, always something new from the Bills coming off what they've been doing well. Now, Bresnahan, the offensive coordinator and line coach, told me they were going to run some wrinkles off things that they'd hurt Miami in the past with, and they're doing it, and so far, every one of them has worked. 
See, and when you control the line of scrimmage right now, like the offensive line for Buffalo is doing, you gain that great devil of a lot of confidence. Plus, it's so easy to call the plays for Kelly. Everything he's called. Offensive line coming off the ball. Watch them nail right across the line of scrimmage. Just boom, boom. Everyone moving. Great block inside dive by Kent Hall on the nose guard. Everybody doing their job. Second and two. Kelly goes deep. on that you get a wide receiver on a safety now Michael Stewart is a strong safety playing deep and man under with zone deep backed up he gets him here he's gonna take him all the way got and he's beaten right away right no safety help deep man all the way to the start that's a mismatch and Kelly read it all the way he knew what he had and he took it Tasker with five catches 108 yards and a touchdown Christie, perfect on foul, and he didn't get there. McDuffie takes it away from Spikes. McDuffie battles his way back to the 20 yard line. Well, let me tell you why the Dolphins just can't do it this year. Forget all these controversies, folks. Take a look at this. No team that lost a game to the Jets has ever gone on to win the Super Bowl at the end of that season. And that was, of course, one of the low points for the Dolphins when they lost, I believe it was a one-pointer, to the Jets. They were also beaten by New Orleans. But the thing that started their downfall might have been kicking away that three-touchdown lead against Indianapolis when you talk to the players. Now Marino, can he rally the troops again in this hostile environment? Middle, Parmalee hangs on and out to the 28-yard line. So a reminder, Dick, coming up next, I'm going to ask you about your Philadelphia Eagles. Now the Detroit Lions have won seven in a row, and the Eagles have got a pretty good defense. Can they hold up? I don't think they'll be able to. I think they've gotten where they are because a real good coaching job by Ray Rhodes and his coaching staff. They've played good defense, yes. They haven't defensed an offense as explosive as Detroit is right now. Number one in the league. But Ray's done a great job here. So that's coming up next here on ABC. Now second and three. Marino to Byers for the Miami first down. Keith Byers out of Ohio State. I don't have to tell Buckeye fans. He always was a talented receiver. He's the only running back to catch a pass in the National Football League history. Right, 100 in 100 consecutive games or more. He's actually 129 consecutive. He just took over the number five spot as a receiver from my old guy, Harold Carmichael. Big Harold. In consecutive games. Yeah, get that ball upstairs, or Harold will pull it. Get it up there. He made me look pretty good at once. Yeah, that's right. Everybody thought you were a good coach. No, they were wrong. <laughs> First down at 10. Inside handoff to Byers. We'll try to run it a little bit. I'd run that draw over under Bruce Smith. That time he came upfield so hard, you could run the draw under him. It's tough the other way around. Well, Bennett shaken up and off on the Buffalo sideline right now. And see, he's trying to loosen it up after making that stop. Let's take a look at this. Boom, down on that hard turf there. Hopefully it's not serious. Second down and seven, and Marino changing things up. And, of course, with the hand signals, because the wide receivers can't hear him on the outside, that's why he was pounding his fist. Smith has run off. Diving attempt there by Green, but incomplete. What he saw was a three deep. What he saw was a three deep. He gave the signal he wanted the tight end seam and the wide receiver fade pattern and try to get it right up in the crease. He threw it properly. He just couldn't make the catch. But that's what he saw from a defensive standpoint. You know, somebody who is noticeably absent from the Dolphin attack is number 80, Irving Fryer. There's the ball right there in the middle of your screen. It was no, coming out before, coming he hit out the turf. before he hit the turf. Good call by the officials. Sure. Irving Fryer noticeably absent. Four wide receivers. 
Marino in trouble, fires right side. Clark, ricochet, incomplete. Great coverage by Kurt Schultz, the strong safety. And Clark says it was too good. He's complaining back there that he was interfered with. What's amazing, though, Brent, is under the pressure that Marino was under, how accurately he could throw that ball without the time. And what a beautiful release on that one. People all around him snap it. That's a hard ball to throw. Beautiful and well done. See, he has no time. Person right in his face, and he throws it right where he has to. Good job of playing fast defense by Kurt Schultz, a strong safety. A fourth down, kids. Get it's a fake. Here comes Kidd. First down, and to the 40-yard line. Leave him in that backfield. Let's run him a few times from scrimmage. Mike Westhoff, the special teams coach, comes up with a good call. Of course, that call has to go through Don Shula. And Don Shula will take risks when he has to take them. I've seen him do it in coaching against him in the past. He'll beat you if you're not sound in one phase of your game. He'll find where you're not sound. The left side, here he's going to run it. He goes right up underneath there. The rush comes inside. There's no one there. That's why it's in the game plan. That's why he felt he could call it in that field position. Good coaching. Big 18-yard run by John Kidd, a former Buffalo punter, now in Miami. And the Dolphins have a first down. They trail it by 24. Reverse comes the reverse. Pass. McDuffie's going to throw it. McDuffie deep down the middle. Incomplete, and that was Irving Fryer at the five-yard line. Appeared to hesitate and not run through it a little yeah. bit. Maybe the ball was hanging. I wonder how his passing technique was. <laughs> well, coming up at halftime, Robin Roberts will be along with Dave Wanstead. Coach of the Bears, Marcus Allen. Aren't the Chiefs making a run at the Super Bowl? Troy Aikman, talk to the Dallas quarterback and preview the game next. Coming up next, the Lions and the Eagles. And the Bill defenders get ready. See the second down now in 10. Out brought by McDuffie. See, they're taking the back out of the backfield and spreading that three deep and giving them four nice seams to work in. Threw it correctly, just couldn't make the catch. You know, Randall Hill who probably is as fast as any of the Miami receivers. If that's the quickest of the bunch, he's going to come out here to the right side, to the crooner side. They've just brought him in off the bench. Chances are they won't single him up. They're no, they're pressing not. him right now. Marino running in that direction. Smith pursuing. And Marino feeling it, and it's incomplete. Marlon Kerner did a nice job on that. He was the underneath coverage guy, Brent. He stayed with the discipline of the defense. Here he is, just you know, a three-year veteran. Hasn't been starting due to injuries to Jeff Burris. He's starting at that left corner position. That's a tough job against people like Randall Hill. He was the second fastest man in the National Football League a few years ago. He can fly. Well, you look at the scoreboard and you know that Kerner is holding up. There's a big goose egg up there for the Dolphins. Now fourth and ten. And he puts it in Kirby's hands. Kirby battling, reaching, extending. Did they spot it for a first down? Let's see where they put it. Kirby did a real nice job there. You know what you could see he has a lot of shake and break. He really is the receiver out of the backfield that they like to get the ball to. Caught 66 balls coming into the football game. You can throw it in front of the linebackers with him, and he can make the linebackers miss. Yeah, Cash is sorting them out on this measurement here. You get the chain gang out there. When you got a lead like this from a defensive standpoint, you can really play more cautiously defensively. What they're doing now is playing a lot of too deep, either man underneath or zone, but they've always got two deep safeties, and then they change it up and go with three deep. Let's see what they get here. Buffalo. Buffalo. <laughs> you saw that shot of Shula. The one thing about the number of years he has coached, there's can never be something happen in a ball game that he hasn't seen happen before. You know, he's experienced everything. 
Here's Kirby coming out of the backfield now. He's just a little check down move. Now, good shake and break. See, he can make you miss. I thought he got the first down. Bennett was on him right there. He reached out with the ball, but see, he was down prior to getting that ball down. Good placement by the officials. So Kelly and the Bills leading it by 24. Tasker, who has been one of the stars in motion. Here's another one of their celebrities today. Thurman Thomas. Boy, did two better running backs ever come out of one school in quick succession like Thurman Thomas and Barry Sanders? Unbelievable pair. But what is demonstrated here, watch Big Ben Parker. Now, they do other things within the offensive line. Follow a 310-pound agile offensive lineman. Watch this. Hops over the top. Bound. Gets a nice block. Stays on his feet. He loves to play football, and he's well coached. That's 107 yards here in the first half for Thurman. And what's most impressive Thurman about Thomas. it is the fact that the Dolphins had to know he was coming. When you look back at the recent history of this great rivalry, this man, number 34, has been extremely prominent in the Bills' victories. When they start to move the ball on the ground and dominate this Miami defense, as they have recently, He's the reason why, with some good, powerful blocking up front. They have rushed the Bills half today for 194 yards. And did you see that quick, elusive move? They had him trapped for a loss, and he got away. Who else does that? The person you just mentioned, Barry Sanders. Does the same thing. You got him trapped. Two guys got him. You know, sandwiched inside, and they both miss him. Now, he'll probably take himself out. The coaches do not substitute him in and out of the ballgame. He takes himself in and out of the ballgame. And he said today that he wanted to go because he felt so good, as Leslie Visser said early in the broadcast. He really felt good. But when you see Derek Holmes come in, the coach didn't send him in. Coach Thurman sent him in. Now Kelly off a fake to Thurman, rolling left, got it, first down. You know, and actually he had a deep receiver open that time. Billy Brooks was down the sideline against that double zone. The safety didn't see him and rotate over, and he was standing on the sideline waving his hand at Kelly. Hey, I'm open. Throw it to me. So Tony Klein gives the Bills another first down as we re We've got to go back and figure out what he's accomplished in three weeks against this defense. He's had a career against it. It's first down now for Kelly. And back comes Thurman. And this time he has jammed up at the point of attack. Cox was in there helping out that time along with Kling Bayel, the nose man. He's a load inside of watching him play, right? I mean, he can take an offensive lineman and stuff him at the point. Now, he isn't going to sprint sideline to sideline, but within five yards of either side of him, he can make the play. Now with three wide receivers. And Kelly firing deep in the right side, and it is picked off. It, the second interception against Kelly today for the Dolphins, but they have nothing to show for it, and this is as good as burying a punt with 125 down there. They were man-to-man -man coverage all the way with a free safety, and he was going for it. He tries to look the safety off. See, he's looking right. Now he comes back to the left. Now Gene Atkins got a jump on it. He didn't get there. He didn't have to. Right there, you would like your wide receiver, Billy Brooks, number 80, to prevent the interception. He should be able to prevent that guy from catching the football minute 25 to go down by 24 and Tasker limping on the Bills sideline as we approach the halftime intermission. Those Northwestern guys not real tough on the skater. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he, he I don't see epitome. San Jose State going to Rose Bowl. <laughs> <laughs> 24 got the Buffalo with the lead and Miami attempting to do something here in the last minute and a half. Marino getting it into Kirby's hands and Kirby to secure him. Well, tomorrow afternoon on ABC Sports, you're going to see the conclusion of the Anderson Consulting World Championship. Might want to tune over there and see who can win the million dollars. That's what's on the table tomorrow, live to Eastern Time on ABC. Now that's some big bucks. Snaps it off to Clark, and Clark battling for a first down has it. You know who did a nice job that time? Billy Miller did a real nice job, that rookie right tackle. Bryce Pop tried to take him inside, and he set properly, used good to reach. 
the Super Bowl four consecutive years. That was an awesome feat. First and ten now with Marino back in the shotgun. Snaps it off to McDuffie. And McDuffie running underneath. And, of course, the Bills pulling back their coverage. And that underneath man is going to be there as the time continues to tick away on the Dolphins. See what they did? They showed it too deep and then moved it to a four deep, four quarters across the field. So he just threw the ball underneath. They're getting off too quick. That must be offside. Yeah, it is. And Marino will take and he'll take, take this that play anyway play. Yes. as Clark is down to the 41-yard line with 23 seconds. Bruce Smith was getting off too quick. Yeah, Marino already has done. We declined it. <laughs> yeah. So, Danny, go up there and call the play, partner. Let's go. Get him up there. Offside. Number 78 on the defense. That penalty is declined. First down. Yeah, that's what I wanted to hear. First down. Away, Red Baby. I've heard old Red say some things I didn't like to hear from time to time on the sideline years ago. Uh, <laughs> like, shut up, Vermeil. <laughs> uh, last time I heard that, it was your lovely wife, Carol. <laughs> In the middle, oh, and almost intercepted by Cornelius. Really good pass coverage by the big, strong inside linebacker. They tried to hit the crossing pattern behind him. He was reading zone. He read the quarterback's eyes and moved with the quarterback, and therefore he got where he was throwing the ball. What a gifted football player. Five Pro Bowls. You know, Dick, one of the things time. we learn, speaking of that, with these guys, they really enjoy living and playing here. You know, Buffalo's a very tight room community, and everybody rallies around you. You can get home rather quickly. You can be with the family. It's a very wonderful environment in here with a great facility. Now Marino gets coverage, snaps it off, and Clark is well defended at the 35. Kenny Urban. See, they were sitting back in the zone. They went three deep. There they, they, they rushed four, and then they had four underneath in those quarter zones, and hard to get it in there. They were just sitting there waiting for him to throw that ball. You know, you were talking about the attitude of these players. Marv Levy doesn't keep anybody that doesn't have character. Mm -hmm. Therefore, they're very close-knit group, and he does a great job of presenting a squad to a coaching staff in the frame of mind to be coached. Third down. Kirby will try to cut back, and he was slowed up by Irvin and could not break free. Irvin then got help, and time is called with five seconds remaining and a reminder of what's coming up next here the second game of our NFL playoff doubleheader the Detroit Lions against the Philadelphia Eagles just to start digging out from that 24 point hole 53 yarder for Stoyanovich with Kid the punter holding his long this year is 51 but his career long is 59 he's got the kind of leg he needs it to hook just a little bit and it did not some changes with the assistants and the players after the season but Don Shula will be in on those decisions so Stoyanovich will put it in play here to start the second half and uh, the whistle no kick to bring this one back so while we have a moment let's uh, check in with uh, Leslie Visser Leslie Brent, the theme in the Dolphins' locker room was one of discouragement. Don Shula said going off the field, he said, I am angry, I am frustrated. We knew coming in that we had to stop Thurman Thomas on defense. We haven't been able to do it. On offense, we're not giving Dan Marino enough time. Marv Levy told his people, this is how you beat the Dolphins. Keep it up. Brent. Thank you, Leslie. And uh, the reason for the re-kick? Brett Cashin had not come onto the field of play yet. So without, without the referee, they were down there uh, making sure that the batteries would hold up here in the second half for you at home to uh, listen to what's uh, <laughs> unfolding down there on the field. So we'll have a duo. Red's batteries or the microphone batteries? <laughs> I'll tell you, he's I'm been tell, doing I'm a, tell him you said that. He's been doing it a long time, and no one does it much better, I'll tell you that. Derek Holmes, the rookie. A uh -oh. long-looking run out to the 33-yard line where Jim Kelly and the 
Bills will put it in play. The numbers just emphasize and underline the score right now. No question. I mean, being dominated totally. Look at the rushing yards there by Buffalo, 197 to 52. When do you see a football team minus one and a half and leading 24 to nothing? You know, just total domination. I think Miami has to get out of the nickel defense and rundown situations and put the third linebacker in the ball game and say, listen, I'm going to stop your run, beat me throwing. Because you know the Bills will attempt to run again if moving the clock is important enough. That's is there a fumble. There it is. That's the fumble. He put it down on the first play, and the Bills pounce on it. So the first break goes Buffalo's way. And somebody is hurt. They were waving for the medical staff of the Bills to get out onto the field. So while tension is being given the player, we'll take a break. Point of injury when if someone comes in down from the backside on your leg like that can be tough. So Lonnie Johnson, the tight end, is out. Steve Tasker is out with the hamstring. And Thomas just takes matters into his own hands and runs it to the 44-yard line. Now here's the injury to Johnson again the tight end now watch Cox he appears to have him engaged standing to the left side 84 and eight yards see he gets that right leg caught underneath him like that and bent over backwards <clears throat> and Lonnie putting on his uh, parka over here on the Buffalo sideline as the officials measure that last run by Thurman Andre Reed well out to the right and now without Tasker, Brooks is the motion man. Thomas again crosses midfield, slams across the 45, and the Dolphins again back on their heels. They're getting, they're getting great angle blocking. Blocking down, then pulling a lineman from the backside and kicking out and creating those seams right up inside. Look at this, seven plays, touchdown, six plays, field goal go all the way down to the one yard line and throw an interception touchdown touchdown can't do it much better than that first and ten for Kelly and the Bills and Thomas now with about a hundred and forty yards on the game already this AFC wildcard game brought to you by looks across the 35 yard line it is amazing Dick how well they make this play work against the Dolphins. Well, the Dolphins play a defensive front that is consistently used all through down and distance situations. They know where the people are and they're blocking accordingly. I, I'll be surprised if they don't change the fronts a little bit more. Many of you remember that game. It was blacked out on television that day here in Buffalo. That is a sprained right knee for Johnson, we are told. They change the front up inside this time, Brent. And Holmes battling his way toward the first down. And uh, Shula showing his displeasure with what's happening. Yes, it was third down and not real short. But see, now they're taking the gaps here. They're putting people down inside like that to stop those inside runs. A little hard to find a crease when you're inside there like that. And Coleman and Cox comes down from the outside, number 51. They're coming with a blitz here. And Holmes steps away to the 32-yard line and Chuck fling by L. See, they play five defensive backs rather than the three linebackers against Buffalo because of the three wide receiver set. Now, if Kelly came up and they saw them in a three linebacker, four defensive back set, then he would probably audible pass. But I think it's a pretty good option because they have not stopped them from running the football. The other linebacker will help. You know, there's always a chance that Kelly might throw it incomplete. You know what's interesting about this series? Starting with a 24-point lead, they quickly run four minutes off the clock, keeping seven plays on the ground. Chris Singleton. Former University of Arizona linebacker. 
top pick at New England, played 26 games at New England, had 26 games at Miami, considered a good football player. Had a knee injury last year. You know, Dick, I was mistaken a moment ago. I was saying that a game was blacked out. The one I was thinking about was this one. When the Bills were down 35 to 3, Reich replaced Kelly and led him back in an unforgettable game. Now they wait for the end of the round to develop, and Russell Copeland getting the carry and being run out by Michael Stewart. And Stewart with a few words to uh, Copeland over there on the Dolphins sideline. The other thing, there was good defensive end penetration over there by Jeff Cross. He got upfield and made the play bow back, back toward their own end zone, and that helped everybody else get there. And like you said, Michael Stewart then got over there. Good discipline, remained in his field position responsibility and made the play. very quiet in command feeling comfortable Ooh, nice tackle Ryan Cox nice tackle not easy to tackle that guy on a draw play up in the hole like that Brian Cox did a real nice job you have to wonder about him he'll be a free agent at the end of the year he'll be demanding big dollars the Dolphins will uh, have to consider his value to the team right. there are some other clubs like uh, I suppose back in St. Louis he came out of East St. Louis maybe even Dave Wanstead in Chicago would be interested in a middle linebacker like Cox there'll be a market depends if you want a guy at Spitz or not <laughs> Chris Moore <laughs> and now watch Red Cashin mark this when a ball is out of bounds, many of you see what he's looking right at the referee. There's, there he is, making the mark as to where the ball is. You always thought that guy down underneath the ball doing that, but it never is when a ball is punted out of bounds. Good job, Red. We were called an experiment, but what someone figured. 24 nothing at the half. And that's where they stand right now. They attempted a long field goal in the closing minutes of the first half just in an effort to get something on the board. Now they will bring it out. First and ten, but already the clock down to nine and a half minutes here in the third quarter. Byers, bus free, and runs well for about ten yards with Matt Darby making the stop. So a reminder of what's ahead of you here on ABC. The Nokia Sugar Bowl tomorrow night at 7 Eastern, Virginia Tech and Texas. Then Dick, you and I will be down in Orlando for the Comp USA, Florida Citrus Bowl, Ohio State and Tennessee. Dick, that should be uh, one of the better bowl matchups. And I don't say that just because you and I are heading there. Well, I think it will be. We know Ohio State so well. We've seen them so many times this year. And watching Tennessee in, uh, in preparation to do the broadcast the day after tomorrow, you can see that they're extremely talented, Brent. I always wanted to say this. And then the Rose Bowl. Uh -huh. Keith Jackson and Pasadena. The Northwestern Wildcats against the Trojans of USC. What a wonderful job by those players. Darnell Autry and the, the rest of the Wildcats. The coaching staff, the entire staff. Gary Barnett. But listen up. You got your hands full. The Trojans have been sitting at home. John Robinson's tough in the Rose Bowl. Don't be surprised. Quit trying to motivate him. <laughs> <laughs> Do the game, will you? Here comes Marino driving down now. Here's Parmalee. Parmalee run out at the 49 yard line. You got me. You've, you've had that Northwestern hat on. I see at breakfast you have the hat on. At lunch you have the hat on. <laughs> Cold beer at midnight, you have your hat on. <laughs> the only time in my life I've ever been able to wear to wear that hat this time of year. And then know? I get here, and who's wearing the same hat? <laughs> your buddy from Northwestern. <laughs> Old Steve Tasker. Getting warm. It's getting a little chilly over there on that Dolphin sideline. When you're losing like this, the second half, Marino attempting to rally the troops, fires high and incomplete. They're playing a three-deep zone, and you should throw those deep slants and slant patterns against the three-deep zone that time. It's a strong side zone coverage. Marino saw it. He just got the ball a little bit too high, but that's what he wants to do with it. Seven and ten. Has Fryer caught a football yet? He has been blanked, Coach. Wade's defense has blanked. 
Either Mr. Blankton, Fryer. Either Blankton or they just haven't thrown it to him. I don't I don't remember well, I, I really thought his agent was brain dead this week anyway. <laughs> saying that my client doesn't get thrown enough balls when they lose. Now they can say it again, right? I mean, that's a... They're trying to find him. Here he there is. he goes. Deep. And he can't hang on. Good coverage by Thomas Smith over there. One on one all the way. And that was a man coverage. I was surprised they'd be in man coverage on that second down situation when you're leading 24 to nothing, Brent. But he had him one on one. Guess the agent will ignore that, right? No, he won't. <laughs> no, he won't. He'll be upset with you. This, you huh? upset that's right there. That's, that's part well, of the You're going into the playoffs. The guy's a free agent anyway, right? He should have caught the ball. <laughs> Oh, it's ridiculous. We like to stir the pot. <laughs> it's third down. Oh, oh Bruce, you're a little quick that time, partner. You're good, but not that good. You know, I asked him about playing in the defensive line with Bryce Pop being there, and he said they actually moved him around less this year with Pop being here. Offside, unabated to the quarterback, number 78 on the defense, five yards, still third down. Here's the two guys. Bryce Pop on your right, 17 and a half sacks this year, 10 more than he got at Green Bay last year. On the other guy, the leading sacker in the history of playoff football in the National Football League. Two pretty good players. Marino, right, and Connor's got it on the ricochet. What great concentration. Bill Johnson with the interception on that side. First one of his career. What great concentration. One and one all the way for Mel Johnson. Jam him a little bit right there. Now he can't touch him again. He's going down. He looks back now at the right time, flicks it away, turns around, the ball's off his helmet. And he picks off his first career interception in the National Football League. So it was our unbeaten at home. And that trend is continuing here with Kelly trying to get a little quiet down in this end of the field. They are chanting that haunting cry of Brian, Brian. This is Holmes, who had checked in the backfield. Terrell Buckley, who started on that corner, made the stop. That's a real okay. good call by Tom Alavadotti. He brought the safety, who's rotated up on the slot, and blitzed him off the safety. That's really tough to audible against. It's tough to see coming, and it's a real good defensive changeup. Now, here they are, trying to do what they've never accomplished, the month of December or January, and Kelly. Got him. Bingo! Brooks running free. Buckley brings him down at the 35-yard line, and there is a penalty flag back at the 20, and Buckley is insisting that this is against the offense, and they are coming back, it looks like. Well, they separated quick there at one time, Brent. They were really tight, then separated quickly. But awfully good pass protection that time. They ran the dogs from the outside. All against Buffalo. Marv doesn't like that one. Billy Brooks right, in the slot, going out. Now he ran like a pick move right there. Yeah, that's there. an illegal play. Yeah, I, a pick move, I think they call Brent. Let's see. He broke clean. But that's a chance you take when yeah. you're up playing man-to-man, -man too. And the other man made contact as he came through there yeah. on it. That Russell Copeland, I believe, was, uh, was interchanging that time with Brooks. And the penalty was called as they came through. They picked the man off, and there was actual contact. You know, it's interesting that Buckley, who was, of course, attacked uh, for his performance for the Packers down in Dallas, a week ago he played very well in St. Louis. Now, He's Buckley, of course, like Deion Sanders, played collegiately down at, down at Florida State. Like Deion, he's not shy. I'll tell you what Buckley is. He's a guy that will make a great play and look like an all-pro and then make a play and get you beat. You know, and you'll go after him. I don't think he's got great speed, but he has great confidence, so he plays like he has great speed. Now, 
Kelly. Incomplete. And, uh, you know, like uh, Fryer, I don't remember Andre Reed catching a pass. I remember him dropping a he ball didn't have in, one the in the first, first half. half. No pass receptions in the first half. So he, too, with the, with the big goose egg. They and, of course, he's had the injury times. problem. Yeah, they threw at him a couple times. It's easier to double a guy when they put him in the slot, too. When he's not in the slot, they've had a the guy that's going to run the ball coming out of the slot. Now, Moore is punting, and McDuffie, if nothing else, should give Marino good attack position. Yeah. Moore is standing back on the Bills' one-yard line. If they're going to mount any kind of a charge, they've got to get it going. McDuffie, fair catch at the 40 play. Thank you now with Dan Marino standing back in the shotgun. 6.46 to go in the third, and the Dolphins behind 24 to nothing and Fryer working the near sideline at the 36 yard line right now Buffalo with this lead you would think they'd play zone that time they were in a man coverage had the strong safety playing man to man on big Eric Green so they rushed five and covered with six so they're still trying to get that pressure with a, either a four man or a five man rush they flex Big Eric off the line. Now they show too deep, Red. No, they're doubling weak side. Marino looks left side. McDuffie reaching back incomplete. And McDuffie saying that he had it. You know, Marino read that perfectly. They showed him a too deep coverage. Then they rolled the coverage weak and doubled Fryer. And he read it and went right back to the strong side. Nothing like being a great quarterback and reading coverages like that. Because they did a good job of disguising it but they didn't fool Dan Marino. You know, he's got such strength in his arm. He can throw the ball into double coverage between people and throw the completed pass and get away with it. Third down and one for Marino and the Dolphins. Back snap. High snap, Buffalo. Bryce Pop. The NFL's Defensive Player of the Year. Why would you be in a shotgun on third and one? <laughs> that startles me a little bit. You're the coach, you yeah, tell me. I know. <laughs> I'd probably have done it myself, but right there, I'll tell you, I wouldn't have done it. Look at that. Intercept the center snap. Nice going. Changes, not only on the coaching staff, but also with the players. Dick? You know, there was a day in the National Football League, a man of his stature, Don Chula's stature, was immune <laughs> to criticism. And the, me the media left him alone. And I, I, to me, it's a shame it's changed because no nobody's done it any better than Don Chula for a long period of time. Dick, I'm going to pick up on that. The longtime columnist for the Miami Herald and a friend through the years and a voice of reason in Miami has been Edwin Pope. Yes, good man. Edwin has written a couple of columns. Last week he had an interview with Wayne Huizenga as he watched the, the Ram game unfold in St. Louis. But Edwin and I agree that things aren't perfect with Don Shula. But here is a man who deserves to fulfill that contract, that two-year extension. That's only right. I mean, let's be reasonable about this. This man has earned the right to be the coach of the Miami Dolphins next year even if things aren't right with this team and Pazinga obviously understands that he's a very reasonable and intelligent man great throw reception at the yeah. field by uh, the tight end and they're waving it off now here let's talk about Eric Green and Bryce Pop and free agency now let's talk about the fact that the Dolphins decided that with Jackson leaving they would sink the big bucks in the hands of the tight end he's been hurt he has not been that consistent for him. They were also interested in Pop, but they backed off. Buffalo stepped in, and think of the difference that those two individuals have made in those two franchises. A lot of changes as you watch Wayne Huizenga up in the box watching his Miami Dolphins. And there is Fryer out of bounds with a first down across the 45-yard line. 28 Thomas Smith, the corner covering there. You know, he's an remarkable, remarkable story, Brent. He was not recruited out of high school. He walked on in college at North Carolina, became a first-round draft choice his senior year. Here he is starting in a playoff game. That's an inspirational story for high school kids that, that want to be something, want to make something of their lives. Yeah, you bet. A little final half minute here in the third quarter, Coach, and Byers uh, has to reach behind him. 
Boy, they just do not have it. There's something missing, and it, it, it looks more mental than it does physical. It really does. From an, Maybe it's an attitude. There's Gary Stevens talking with Coach Shula. You can't catch it for him, Gary Stevens. <laughs> I learned that of myself a long time ago. They're showing a two-deep coverage, Brent. Fire! Brent. McDuffie's got it. McDuffie to the 21-yard line, and a first down for the Dolphins as Dan Marino tries to breathe a little fire in this team. 31 yards. What a beautiful throw. They're up there tight, man-to-man, -man, but now he is back. 27 is backed up. Kenny Urban is backed by a safety going down the hole. The safety just doesn't get there quick enough to help him. That's where you should attack that double zone. Marino read it, got it to him with a beauty. He was here from the original days of the old American Football League. Is a man who has patience, suffered through those early years. Well, actually, they were pretty successful in the 60s for a while, struggled in the 70s. Now the team is back on top, McDuffie. But consider that a team that lost four consecutive Super Bowls. He didn't rant and rave. He didn't go and make big changes. Marv Levy's still in charge, upgraded the facility. If any owner deserves to go into the Hall of Fame this year, it is Ralph Wilson. No question. I had lunch with him the other day when we got in here on Thursday. And he made a great comment talking about the National Football League. He said it used to be about tradition and loyalty, and that has changed, and that's not good. Here is Byers as the Dolphins will attempt to get on that scoreboard quickly here in the fourth quarter. Byers has those great big hands. I don't know if he's ever dropped the ball. Probably has in his career. He's never been the running back everybody thought he would. I've always thought he played a little bit too heavy. I think he ought to be about a 240-pound player rather than a a 253 or 55 pounds. No question about hands. his hands. Fire knocked Cutter. away beautifully by Smith. Tommy Smith. Well, he led the team coming in here with 16 passes knocked down. There's his 17th. Playing with real confidence. Number one pick in 93. Can't throw it much better than that either. Reno conserving. Sam, he lets that thing go coming right at it. Right, everything legal. That right hand just strips the ball. Knocked it away from a pretty darn good receiver in Gary Clark. Third down. Smith trying to battle in. Marino back to the right. Incomplete. He's a rookie, Kenny Urban, number 27, fourth round draft choice out of Memphis. You've got to give this personnel department a lot of credit. They have some good young football players making plays in this playoff game. That ball's thrown real well, but excellent coverage. Excellent coverage. Fourth down. Listen to the crowd in this end of the field. McDuffie brought him in motion across the formation went out then came back underneath they gave him time to throw it set up properly just nailed it well done well executed offensive play you know coaches take the blame many times on bad plays this is a well conceived well designed offensive play they ought to get the credit for the design of that one well done Stojanovic Defensive stand of the game. In less than a minute, the Dolphins get the ball back into Marino's hands. Right, and you know, it's starting at the 40-yard line. You'd think Buffalo would be all fired up to go ahead and just move it, at least for the field goal. But they, like you said, the defense stepped up and made, got it done. Now from behind Marino, and that inside pitch off the shotgun to Byers, and you can see him run down by Smith. Tackle. Bruce Smith is an interesting story because if you talk to Marv Levy and you talk to Ralph Wilson and if you talk to Bruce himself as we did he was pretty immature when he first came in here to Buffalo he's grown up a lot has a young son and a wife and 
very close family man here now. Marino with time. Fires McDuffie's wide open in the middle. And McDuffie to the lateral. And Kirby oh. And the Dolphins have got it on the far side out of bounds. You know that was a hook and a couple of laterals, folks. <laughs> who did a nice job on that was the offensive left guard. Keith Sims came out and picked up right here. Came out and got a real good pickup block that he needed. Bang! Good job. That's a good job by Keith Sims. That allowed Marino the time to get that ball down in that zone. Did you see McDuffie pick him up? Then they tried to get into Fryer's hands, and now it's a first down for the Dolphins. 12-11. The crowd rising and trying to get back in. Trying to make it tough. Outside. And there's movement. Yep. In the neutral zone, I'm pretty sure, unless an offensive line moves. Yeah, I think he did. Huh? Yep. Andrew. Before the snap, full start, number 68 on the offense, five yards, still first down. You know what's interesting about this Dolphin team, and it's been pointed out by a lot of folks, when you look back at them, over the last couple years, they've gotten a lot more penalties than they, than they ever used to. They used to automatically always. lead the league, and we always blamed them because Shula was on the competition committee. That was always the joke when you were having a beer. Yeah. All you coaches, but now he's one of the most penalized teams. I didn't realize you ever had a beer. 11:47. <laughs> chest and he took off and he was going to run and make a hundred yard gain with that thing and he dropped it experience wide receiver you know brian pop is the guy we haven't heard much from coming out of a two-point stance this time it's billy miller and he comes back to the inside and a good job of switching and picking up by andrew green that's why we haven't heard much from brian pop Parmalee's hands and he's across the 40-yard line to the 38-yard line. Those kind of plays against the deep dropping zone are great plays. The running back freezes just for a second, let the rush get the linebackers drop out, and they just check down and they drop it to him. Third down, the Dolphins need four for the first down. Oh. Incomplete. Overthrew Clark and Smith almost picked it. And now the Dolphins come down to fourth down in the season. It looks like Thomas Smith is nursing an elbow or a shoulder. He got up, he's walking around, he's, but he's hurting a little bit. Miami's got to come up. With, if anybody can come up with a play, Marino can. But he's going to need help. They must reach the 35-yard line. man coverage. Leggins. He went to the right guy. They brought the fifth rusher. Six guys playing man to man. He read it. It was locked on to the receiver. Evans comes up and makes a nice square tackle. Dick, a, a, a question for coaches. And I'll come back and, and ask you about that play. It always kind of puzzles me in watching that play. We'll be right back. It's 20... Real good job by the offensive line of stunt pickup inside. They moved big Bruce Smith over his left uh, defensive tackle and tilting, then stunted him around, and the offensive line passed him off and picked it up perfectly. Smith's run off. Marino has to throw it away. Basically, he had an underneath receiver. It was McDuffie. Real, real good job by Phil Hansen that time, and Bruce Smith had pressure too, but Phil Hansen was the main guy. He whipped Sims. This guy is a force, and he plays with the intensity and enthusiasm of a younger player, and he's been around for a long time, 11 seasons.
third and one. And they keep it alive by putting the ball in the hands of number 89, Randall Hill. And he's their speed guy. Randall Thrill the Hill. Starting to rotate some different pass rushers in there right now, Brent. Get a little change up. Oh, incomplete. Buffalo's really now almost playing a prevent type three deep zone, sitting back there deep with three guys deep, four across in the short zone, and the Russian four down linemen. But they're rotating the down linemen. Dan Sakanovich, the defensive light coach, rotating those guys there. And Kozar there, he has something to say. He's thrown a few touchdowns in his day, too, hasn't he? And as most of you know, he, of course, is connected with Dan Marino, so he calls the plays in with that headset. He's been known to change a player two along the way, but he won't take credit for this debacle. Marino? It's embarrassing. It is not their day. It is not their day. I don't know how many they've dropped, but they've dropped a number of them. And they got the kind of coverage they want. Loose zone, you know, boom, just dink it, run up underneath that coverage, make the first downs. Can't make the first down without the ball in your hand. Marv likes it. He likes it. Don doesn't like it. And neither does Gary Stevens. Now on third and ten. Still playing zone. No diving attempt, but oh, incomplete. And that was the free safety, Matt Darby. Yeah, under pressure. <laughs> Pretty much sums it up, huh? Yeah, yeah, it's an old Harvard expression. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> I'll tell you, you know, when you when you know how good and how respected a quarterback is, is when you talk to his retired teammates. Like we ran into Bob Baumhauer down in Alabama that day, Tuscaloosa. What did he say about Marino? The best ever, he said. Best ever. Hit the fade pattern against the double zone. Threw it perfectly right in rhythm. What a throw. What a catch. Safety should have been over there to make the play. Didn't get there. It's going to go right down the sideline. They'll be rolled up on him tight. You see to the left top of your screen, the male number 39 lets him go inside. And the safety's got to get there. He doesn't get there. Poor angle. Chris Green took a too flat an angle to get there. Touchdown. You know, when Johnson is limping off the field, they're getting a little too nicked up in that defensive backfield as they prepare to head on into Pittsburgh. You don't want to go to Pittsburgh banged up because you're going to leave there banged up. <laughs> well, here is Don Shula, of course, back in the 70s. He coached the last unbeaten team to parade through the... NFL, and you've seen it said that their last road victory in the playoffs was 72. Not exactly right. Somebody must have thought this was a neutral site. 74, and a Super Bowl victory in Houston. It was Larry Zonka and the Dolphins. Consider that great Dolphin era. They used to run the ball and pound it out by the great offensive line. Shula chained. They may onside it right here. Good great relationships with him through the years, too. You'll hear from them at the Philly game, Detroit, and having somebody like Jim Kelly, I can't say enough about him. Stayed up here, made a home in Buffalo where these people appreciate close community. It's like an old-time football team up here. You know that? It is. About it's the closest it. that I've ever come to in the NFL since the old days. Is but it, I think it's a reflection of their leadership. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. It's a reflection. Yeah, and the crowd's a good bunch of folks up here yeah, they're the they sold men. a lot of tickets yeah you know these folks uh, scraped the money up got the blackout lifted you can't you know this, this is a good place 
Hard working people. That was not an easy ticket for them to buy this week for the families and the parents up here. Forty four bucks. Yeah, yeah, that's a that's a hard one. You think about that. You already played for your whole your Christmas your and everything. Tickets. Yeah, you bet. But are they loving it now? Oh, I mean, it's the Miami Dolphins. It's Don Shula and Dan Marino, and they're burying them in the playoffs. Kirby. That's Hanson, who was a pass rusher as a defensive tackle. That shows you something. Rushes a passer, the ball is thrown, wheels around, and gets involved in the tackle. Inside and it's incomplete. Gary Clark knows how to catch a football. Can you imagine catching 700 balls? <laughs> That's a lot of power. I wonder what his hands look like. They've got to be all knurled. Huh? <laughs> yeah, I'm only hands? chuckling because Roger Staubach had that gnarled finger and he used to say to me, I keep it that way so I can have handicap parking. <laughs> <laughs> no, hands in NFL. Oh, yeah. Somebody well, did a great picture essay on Oh, I know it. Andre Reed showed us his hands the other day, and they were all gnarled up. Oh, what a stick nice. over there on that side stick. by Darby. Yeah. Matt Darby. The UCLA guy came up and hit. But they still get a first down out of it, Coach. We head on down to Orlando and the Comp USA. Citrus Bowl should be a pretty good one between Ohio State and Tennessee. <laughs> that time, Richmond Webb did a real good job. Bruce Smith went upfield, 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 then tried to go underneath Webb, and Webb just took him and threw him to the ground. That was a real nice job by Richmond. He's done an excellent job here as the defensive coordinator since leaving Denver as their head coach. He's made a real contribution. He you put that is. whole package together. Also, whoever scouts and picks out players knows how to pick good character. McDuffie. McDuffie Marino still Marino battling Marino to the eight-yard line. Ian Marino. Picking good character is important. Eliminating bad character is more important. Because you're never going to be 100% correct when you draft. You find out a lot of things about kids when you get them in your organization. Oh. They're going to call. Yep. Greg Evans. They tried to run that inside slant pattern into the end zone there, and Evans 41 was locked up on him. Pass interference, number 41 on the defense, in the end zone. The ball here they go right here. Now he's going to make a move right here, freeze it right here. You'll see him coming back to the inside right here. See, there and he locks home, and he locks onto him right there. It's right there. The official was right on top of that. Bruce Smith checks back into that defensive line and he gets right down at the nose. Oh, inside there. And wow. Kirby for the touchdown. You know, Miami Dolphins in a two point situation have gone for 19 times in the last two years, more than anybody in the NFL. Here's a shotgun handoff. Top left side of your screen, hand off inside, take a little draw action up inside to get the end up there, and he gets it in the end zone. Kirby does. But one time this season, they went from seven consecutive two point plays. Now, they only made two on the year, so obviously they quit doing it. Well, you know what's interesting about that, Dick, is the team that's gone the fewest is Buffalo. Buffalo, yes, yeah, right. right. Here they go. And unlike the college, which uses the three, they use the two in the NFL, and you'd think they would have a higher rate of success than they do, but the defenses are so good. Smith with a quick start. Pass they've good got job. this time. They hit O.J. McDuffie for the deuce. Clever. It was a follow route. Run the route inside, and then another one follow him. It's hard to hover that type of thing. You're only asking for two yards. Well designed. Danny, is he a competitor? 
is he a competitor? As I was saying, Brent, remember talking to Bob Baumhauer when he was he talked about Dan Marino? He said, I love that guy. Never don't played ever, with a better guy. Don't ever, ever play golf for money against him. Really? Okay. Don't. Especially with my backswing. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm the, telling you, Coach. Yeah. He's going to, to the right side of your screen, there was motion. He's looking back now. You'll see right side screen, focus there. You'll see two receivers. See, one pulling it out and one in following at the same angle he's entering the end zone. Tough to cover that. Good design. Nobody any better, in my opinion, throw the football since I've watched football. Nobody. Remember that what, wasn't it 84 when he came up? 83. 83. 83. But then that that, eight, that Super so Bowl team was played, at 80. uh, 85, right? Yeah. I think that was the last time. I in remember fact, it is the last time he, the Shula of the Dolphins have been there. I remember charting that offense. They scored every 16 snaps that year. Every time 16 yeah, snaps, they were in the end zone. Unbelievable display of offense. You know, one of the six quarterbacks selected that year was Todd Black. Yeah, yeah working for us and doing a great yeah, job. He'll be down at the Nokia Sugar Bowl. Bat it around. They got it. Very well done by the uh, Miami Dolphins. They've got it at midfield here with 2 on 4 to go. They aren't quitting, that's for darn sure. Michael Stewart picking it up that time. You know what's interesting to the... Let me, let me tell you about the mathematics right now. I don't think it's going to happen, but... Uh, Great bounce. Got it up there, and it got better. Now, the ball has to go 10 yards if the white man touches... The white jersey touches it. The end of Stewart, 35, breaks on the ball, and he gets it. J.B. Brown was able to keep the ball in play. With the change in rules to the two-point conversion, the Dolphins are two big plays away if they can convert the two each time. If you tack the 16 points on up there, they've got 38 points, and Brian Cox goes out to 10 to the kicking as he brings it off of course that brings the buffalo cheer as they call it up here they may get out of that zone defense right now Brett because of what you were talking about play a little tight they're showing it too deep and play the handoff, they're going to run on it with Kirby to the 42 yard line now we're going to come down to the two minute warning the Dolphins have one timeout left and they're looking for a miracle NFC Lions and Eagles from Philadelphia. Second down and three for Marino. Hard the right sideline intercepted. That'll do it. They went after the same coverage with the same pattern that they scored the touchdown on, Brent. Tight man-to-man -man up front, racked up by a safety, but this time the corner did a real good job. You'll see what I'm talking about right here. They're going to two deep coverage, two deep back here. All right, man-to-man -man up here. He'll run the fade down the sideline, but they lock on and stay man-to-man. -man. Last time he beat him for the touchdown, the safety is deeper. If he doesn't make the interception, he would have played it properly that time. A real good job of playing defense by Kenny Irvin number 27 see hit him he knows he has help he's looking back the ball's coming down there real good job the ball wasn't thrown quite far up in front but the safety was there to protect it and now in the playoffs the Bills have beaten the Dolphins Three straight times, and I believe Smith called, caused Webb to pull out of there. But uh, here comes Kirby at any rate. So the Bills win it, 37 to 22. And the Bills, let's go to Leslie. 